I typically leave them up here and I have this room set up with paperwork like in the afternoon. So it should be here with the right here this immediate day. But if for whatever reason it's not, just leave the room because that's not a thing. They don't want to have these type marks on it. But if there's a little bit of a thing, then it would be the same thing. From the district. Now let's call this meeting um, of the of July 12th Voluntary Select Board to order. Um, we have a very full agenda tonight, and um, we, have, we have a special guest here that's going to present on uh, Greenview Drive. I'm going to handle that first, and then um, we're expecting a candidate for a job interview, so we'll get right into that after. So community input's going to be delayed a little bit. I uh, apologize for that, but it's, uh, it's um, with the whim of the agenda here. So, uh, with no further ado, uh, Chris Weisbold is here um, to, to talk to us about uh, Greenview Drive, which is a road that has been constructed for I don't know how many years, but um, is now ready to be turned over to the town. Um, so, take it away. Thank you, first of all, for Juggle your schedule to have a general let us to go first. I appreciate very much my guest too. So I don't know if everyone has had a chance to read the missive that I sent. Um, four page letter. I'm happy to you know, just touch on briefly summarize that stuff. Um, the, the attachments I very Caroline with by email for you all to have um, is intended to document the authority and the explanation. Be no different than if I was doing a commercial closing or something. So when someone signs a deed, you also document they have all the authority to do that. Um, and so those various attachments, something that people are trying to do forever and they have whatever. Uh, the fiduciary deed of distribution that I referred to in my letter has been, in fact, recorded. I've updated the proposed deed to make that reference. And Mark and Suzanne signed a certificate of the LLC. So um, over 10 years ago, 2010, you know, this road was laid out uh, as part of the planning board approval for these various lots. I have large sized copies of these plans. I'm familiar, or whatever, this is the road we're talking about. Um, Indigo Hill Road, can you see? Mm -hmm. uh, Indigo Hill Road used to just be a your gravel way. Um, I, ha I have lots of files in my office, but my best understanding is that it was probably just property owned by the abutters to the center line and the town had bad at using over it. Uh, when this subdivision plan, plan came before the planning board to create these two lots, commercial lots, and you know things I think were already in the oven to create commercial lots on this side, the planning board said, no, 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 we're going to have a real road. And um, so this subdivision plan, you know, which is first shown on this, with additional detail down here because of easement, um, the planning board also requested that a road layout plan 
be um, approved simultaneously with the final subdivision approval. That shows you know, all the specifics of the road by means and bounds description so that ultimately when the road was done, completed to all town specifications, easements granted, and the authority to confirm who could sign it was all in a row, um, this would be conveyed to the town. So, um, you know, as a matter of law in New Hampshire, the planning board had, you know, the authority to lay this out. Uh, it's the select board's uh, responsibility and authority to confirm, okay, it's done right, and with your road agent and advisors to make sure that all the uh, road was completed in terms of development payment and everything correctly, and that the deed is in proper form. So um, the road was first constructed to a base coat to facilitate development on lot two, which is where for where that recycling oil refinery out there. Mm -hmm. And you know, these other lots didn't sell mark, owned this and various LLC entities. And it just paid this thing, took care of it for 10 years, it was on the shelf all that long. Um, last year, this property and its business said the price was sold to a, uh, another commercial entity. They wanted to see the road finished up, that precipitated mark, you know, getting the final paving done by Brock's Industry, which was completed last October. Um, George. George Gilman, that's right. And George Gilman, the road agent. Um, you went out and inspected it, confirmed it was good. And the first thing that said, well, you got some new pavement. We want some more shoulder on the road so the traffic doesn't bite off the edges and degrade it. That was done. Um, so we were all ready uh, by years end to say, let's accept this road. It was discovered. Aha, this board didn't have the legal authority with all its you know, I started T's cross to do so. There, um, we communicated with, with Tom Clark also mm -hmm. and realized the and shared the legal authority that the state grants towns to adopt authority for the select board to accept roads when they have been laid out and approved by the planning board. And that's what you guys, um, as a town, finally adopted this June 8th by Article 19 of your town warrant. So now you have the authority to accept the road deed. You know, George can attest to its being completed. And I'm here to, you know, explain to you or answer any questions that the road deed is in final format. This road deed was first drafted back in 2010 because um, Mark had plenty of, you know, finance commitments to build this facility. It had to be all done and you know, we, we drafted that as well as the four easements that I'll touch on real briefly in a moment. But it was on the shelf for all this time until it's completed, take it off the shelf. There has been a um, outstanding issue about two of the easements that are included in the road deed being shown and laid out by easement plans that hadn't been recorded a decade ago, like these subdivision plans. And it was finally an aha moment, me speaking with Kevin McEnany, McEnany Serving Associates, like, why that was so. He has a statutory certification that he needs to sign off on a plan before it's reported to the registry. I wrote a subsequent letter last week to Caroline and shared that. Where he has to say, these plans that show the easements, this is the fourth to find easement, it's a water line that brought water into the facility and then goes all the way over to town-owned property. So it's all part of your, your, your waterworks system. Um, his certification says that this plan may show property boundaries that exist in the easement, but no new ways. Well, that, he can't say that with honesty because this is the new way that this board has not yet accepted as a public strength. Um, similarly, there is an easement, the third described of the pertinent easements, on the bottom or in the middle of, of lot one, closer to this. This is all just a drainage easement to accommodate drainage. There are two other easements on either side of the new um, perpendicular entryway of Greenview Drive to Rollins Road. There's a culvert beneath, so there's drainage easements there that are also depicted in the original subdivision. here on this little new corner of lot one and here. So those are described, I gave you an attachment to color code so you can see the pertinent easement. What this does, an easement is a property right. I, I don't mean to, many of you probably know this, but right. Oops, I don't know if I'm blocked with you. Um, an easement is a property right different than actual owning the land itself. You have a overlay property interests or right to use somebody else's lot. So these yellow highlighted easements exist on lot one, lot three, and lot two out here, which are independently owned by Janice Huntworth and 
March Dad's Trust, um, co-trustees of that. <coughs> we wrote the LLC, which is an entity Mark owns. You know, so these, these, these two are on that lot, this is on that lot. And lot four is you know, now on the easement four is now on that lot number two property. Um, I'm sorry, that's easement number one. Easement number four is the one on the refinery property that runs right along the building from the cul-de-sac to the town property. So I presume, Mark, correct me here, the water must come from the town. Yes, from and the yeah. right to the water tower. Yeah. And then to service the facility, yeah, but it's, you know, the easement exists out here in case anyone else as a commercial user was going to tap into the water further, come down the street, so the easement brings that right, right up to here. So the town will get ownership of the land as it's fully described in its full 50 foot width in the cul-de-sac and the apron spread at the intersection, and these easement rights for drainage easement to accommodate the culprit for the water line. And you know, when this is recorded independently to council, we will assure, because Mark needs to know that too, that it will be conveyed absent any encumbrances or means that would affect the town to have these rights absolutely. So, you know, the road got done in January, and that's when we realized the hot town didn't have authority. Uh, earlier in time, last year, last spring, when the lot two refinery property was being sold, um, that's when we realized that the deed that had been prepared in 2010 for Mark's entity GPT design because it owns, you know, this little bit of the road that comes in because it was once a part of Jerry and Joanne Anderson's property that was all this parcel. So if you did a title chain, you say, well, you put this big puzzle together by the Andersons owning this. But the planning board creates this subdivision with a new lot up to the road. So the Andersons had to give this little parcel B to lot one. Um, this area just basically gets abandoned by the town's approval of the subdivision and the easement will go away. But I don't believe the town has any actual ownership rights in that underlying bed. And this part of the roadway land was all part of the original tract of land that Mark Stat, David, and his uncle Aaron had once acquired back in time right, in some place. And um, Mark's dad intended to fund his half-interest ownership of that with his sister-in-law, Janice, because his brother Aaron died by his estate. She became a half-interest owner. He meant to fund that into his trust for state planning purposes. And the estate would then include um, the half-interest chunk. He didn't describe this be only, so it didn't describe this or the roadway bed plan that uh, has to be conveyed by the owners of this original track. So that's why probate also had to be open and has been cooking along since last summer and has just finally now reached the point where uh, the notices that have to be sent by law have all been sent um, and that summary administration of Mark's as the state can be finalized to say, poof, um, per his will, the half interest he had in this property and the road bed land, road bed land goes in fact to the co-trustees of his estate land and trust, which is Mark and his brother. But his brother has declined to serve in that capacity, so Mark serves alone. And I have documented that as my attachment also, as well as I have documented the stuff in probate that funnels this interest there. So lastly is the authority of the LLC. And I have, like I would for any bank closing, giving you copies of its formation, its good standing, its uh, limited liability operating agreement, who has that interest, and Mark is the manager of that. He has the legal authority to sign that. He's the actual member of the LLC is he and his wife the trust. So, this deed conveys this road, which comes from these other parcels. Everyone's interest is accounted for, and the descriptions were done you know, way back in 2010, they've been updated ever so slightly just to refer to other monuments and things, thinking that this easement plan could not be recorded. But that's the last piece of the puzzle we finally resolved last week. When Kevin McEnany has to certify this plan, part of the statutory certification, the surveyor must sign on a plan to record it at the registry of deeds if the plan's not going to be approved by a planning board is that the survey just shows property boundaries or easements in no new ways. And that's not so, because the new way is shown. So, you resolve that conundrum by saying, 
well, let's get here. Hopefully, you folks accept the deed. It can be signed by the signers who have authority, co signed by you, the evidence, acceptance, when it's seen at the registry of deeds. Tell um, Kevin, Kevin knows it's away. He signs the certification, which records the plan. I put the plan recording references in the paragraphs in the deed. That gets recorded. Everything is finally done if the planning board intended in February 25th. So, okay. Questions? Can you repeat the. No. <laughs> 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 um, so, so just, just as a reminder, so this was on the, the warrant, um, Article 19, which passed overwhelmingly. I don't, I don't know what the vote count was, but. Um, and the town has a legal obligation to accept this road. Um, so it's really no question, um, but I mean certainly if you guys have questions for, for Chris or Mark. The only, or the only question I have is just the Anderson property you're referring to? Yes. Was that absorbed, absorbed into the plan or was it just an easement of that property? No, it was all part of this subdivision plan. So um, this subdivision plan Subdivision, it was, a, it was a series of planning board approved subdivision and lot line adjustment. Okay. And it's shown on two pages. Um, so, this is, so this is sheet one, and then this is sheet two, which okay. is enlarged. So the Anderson brought to the table, they were, they were in name applicants to the planning board. They owned this property. Yep, I'm familiar you know? with it. I'm familiar yep. with the whole property. It's yep. shed on it. Yep. And, and then... Um, Aaron and David acquired David. I mean, Aaron died, so Janice becomes a co-owner with David. Wentworth. So David and Janice applicant. David and Janice Wentworth were the other applicants, and they owned all this land. Okay. Okay. Yep. And that includes the roadbed land uh, here, but not the roadbed land here, because that roadbed land is part of the Anderson property. Okay. So you lay out, you know, so if you lay out a new road. The plan board says you can't have this little tiny lot. It's got to go someplace logical to go become part of lot one that was approved. Okay. And so the Andersons conveyed this to David and Janice. Um, then whatever was remaining, Joanne and Jerry Anderson conveyed it to Mark's LLC, which was then named Green New Technologies LLC. It's a name change. Sense. Okay. So that's why he, as a manager of that LLC, now owned. Everything but this little dimple. They own the roadbed land in that this lot. So when he conveys the road deed, he will convey away what Kevin has labeled as track A. Okay. And what will be left is lot three. So when Mark, as the successor co-trustee of his dad's trust, which is half interest on the genesis of this, they will be conveying their interest in this chunk of land to the road together with the easement rights here and here, here and, you know, and here because that's not part of one and he conveys his LLC, the easement that's on this parcel. And he, in the deeds we prepared when this was conveyed, conveyed this subject to the easement that goes from the town down to the cul-de-sac for the water line, which is shown on this other one. Not that one. This one. Okay. So the current owner of this property owns this property burdened or subject to this easement with the express understanding and intention that it was eventually going to be conveyed to the town. Okay. Mess that up for There is there a lot of puzzles to this Yes. Yeah. yeah, I have two banker puzzles. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces of this puzzle. I'm sorry. I have a question. Sure. You've got no legal opinion for any issue to no, not a legal opinion, and the board is certainly welcome to do that if you think it's warranted, particularly given the complexity of it. Um, as, as he said, George has um, gone out and inspected the roadway with Tom Clark, who's also looked at that in reference to the plan. But as far as all of the um, land deed moving around, um, no. So, so in terms of the land moving on, if I, if I may add to that, um, I don't think anyone from the towns ever independently searched title to this. Um, you know, but this had to be title had to be searched for this for that conveyance. A lot of you know title insurance money involved, and necessarily it had to 
search the title to all the property owners on the Anderson mm -hmm. and Anderson and all these puzzles. Um, and they know this deed is to be given. Um, lots that use this road, including these two, and the ones that were subsequently subdivided on this side, that don't own any land, they come up to this surveyed boundary. All those lots bought subject to a road maintenance agreement that said Toby Town accepts this, um, the plow and stuff, but at some point if we need his ownership interest decreased, they all share and do that until it's accepted. In terms of um, like the correctness of this team and everything, in 2010, I have letters I brought them with me. I was corresponding at the time with Steve Roberts, who then was Steve was counsel um, for the town of Wallensburg. No, I'm not going to cross over and you know, say what he opined to for the town or whatever. Um, but that I shared with them the road deed as it was drafted and with the easements. Um, Mark's entity was then financing the construction of this facility. We have a ton of banks involved in all that stuff. And one of the assurances that I was working on at the time was that the lenders who took um, mortgages on this property would release um, any mortgage interest they had in this property when it became time for the, the roadway land to be conveyed to the town so that theoretically a foreclosure couldn't take away any town interest in that. Um, you know, those, that, those mortgages have gone away. But I don't know, I can't recall if this entity has a mortgage or not, but it would have been necessarily burdened by the ease that the town takes, and it takes only lot two, which does not include any roadway land. So, well, I'd like to say Steve was all over this piece of the time. Twelve years later, I put on it, to say, but we were, we were dealing with it. He knew all about this new planning board stuff. We had to close on the back and and he went so far as to obtain an agreement from Mark's lenders that were financing this to say, yeah, yeah, we can have you sign copies of this and say, we have to release something to facilitate the working in advance and we'll do subsequent turnover ownership and mortgaging subject to these things that are necessary now. So you can't go get a legal opinion. It's not like no one's ever had a clue about this. It's, it was cooked in 2010 also. So we have some claims from people. Yes. Yep, yeah, this plan. Um, So, 
So I said that the select board co-signs this need to confirm its acceptance of the roadway and emergency is described above. As often I put, it's authorized by the town select board vote or whatever they may be that. Um, as so authorized by the town meeting vote, uh, 2020, uh, 19, 20. And I said, by accepting this deed, the select board acknowledges the intent of the planning board's approval of the proposed roadway layout. I referenced this plan in the uh, a part As a part of its subdivision law, I adjustment approvals for these other two plans. And I say see note 8 on plan 9886. So these notes on the third plan down is a note. And I quote it here also. It says see note 8, which states, quote, that portion of parcel 85 and that portion of Indigo Hill Road south of the new layout shown, shown to be abandoned are to be combined with lot 2-14. Well, if you look to the plans and said that, that said by that combination, lot 1 becomes complete. What that text was referring to is that when this new road layout is done, if there was any Indigo Hill Road land there, it's just abandoned. That if the intent is for that to become part of Lot One, that's what the planning board approved. Okay. And it's my opinion that kind of have ownership per se, they need to convey a deed and just got to use it right because it's a gravel road. That's how it okay. got years ago. So, so all you do is create record evidence of the registry that goes signing that deed. Of your actions tonight, for yourself, so that no one has to go through a bunch of work you with other people and stuff. I just think that's a better okay. way to do it. Right. Okay. We have been talking about this a while, but before you were on, so mm -hmm. it's not completely new to us, but it might be to you. So. Yeah. So. Um, but if we're ready, you could we, I would entertain a motion to. I would make a motion to approve the vote. To accept Greenview Drive. Um, is it town board? Yep. Yep. Perfect. Second. All right. Any further discussion? No thing at this point. Okay. Um, I will call for vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, the motion passes. Unloaded a road. There you go. So in terms of signing, I have to get, why don't I get my side? Sign and get it in your hands for co-signature. Uh, if I never copy the vote, I can get Kevin to report the plans and sign the certification, insert those in the final deed, and then, um, you know, when the board might next, perhaps at next meeting, just sign things and show up recording as a line. Yep. I'll get it back to you. I will not that should be fine, that. And, and to my mind, by, by the vote just taken tonight, they would have the authority Absolutely. to follow up on, on signing even before the next meeting, depending on when we can get that. I would agree. Yeah. So whenever, I'll, I'll get... The plan is recorded that they revised, you know, Mark to sign, um, you know, and, your, and Janice to sign. Yeah. And have that original in your hands. And we are meeting them next Monday night. Um, it's an off schedule meeting, um, but it is posted as an official select board meeting, so we can yeah. sign it. Then. So I can get it to you before that. Very good. Perfect. So, uh, all right. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. Thank you. For Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Um, so at this point, um, we we do have a, a candidate for um, an opening on our police department that uh, would like to interview, which will be done in non-public session. So um, I'll make a motion on job A for 91A. Make motion going more public. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call a roll call vote. Paul? Yes. Kim? Yes. Miles? Yes. Uh, we're in non public session. Thank you. Jack? 30. Uh, hearings today. According to the record, the phone number on all of it um, came back somehow. It's the 800 number bell. Let me know when you're ready, Salome. Oh. Um, so we uh, met in uh, public with a, a candidate for um, our open patrolman position, and um, I would entertain an offer to, to extend the, I'm sorry, the motion to extend the conditional offer um, to Mr. William Bonnenberger. I'll second that. 
Uh, actually, okay, yeah, I'll make a motion. Uh, <laughs> how do you spell it? B O H N E N B E R G E R. I'm just going to uh, amend my motion a little bit that it would be for $22 an hour uh, with a start date of September 1st. Okay. Um, uh, sorry. okay. Uh, all, uh, any further discussion? On, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion passes. I will sign this right now. Oh. And please uh, offer our congratulations. I will. Thank you. You need me to stay for security and phone system. I don't uh, have anything else. I don't think so. Why don't we just chat about that real quick? Okay. Um, since we did have. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Um, at our last board meeting, um, the subject came up, and I know that uh, Chief Ducharme had gotten some one quote. I think we want more okay. information. Sure. Like what? You know, more more quotes. What? Okay. What's the right fit? Um, and can I? I know that you had most of the questions. Um, yeah. Right, I did. Um, um, just since we we don't really have the person who did the budget, right? Um, I but so I can certainly take care of that in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And I'll get at least two more quotes for you, so we at least have three. That's good. And does it does it make sense for Ray to come in? Um, if you would this, like that, I'll that certainly be, reach out to yeah, him and that would be helpful. Yeah. yeah. Would you know, you know. Now I know you have an abbreviated meeting next week, which you want to be the week after. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So who's ready? Excuse me. Did you say uh, Ray Valera? I can't. 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 All right, it's been a long way, but. All right, we're going to jump back up to the top of our agenda. Um, community input. Um, I know that we have a gentleman here. I'm, I'm, I'm making another assumption um, about Bicentennial Park. Um, and this would be, well, I guess we can. It's for the number. We can handle Yeah, why don't we do it now? Um, oh. If you're ready to. Sure. I, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming you're David Nass. But I, Stephen Nass. Yeah. Stephen Nass, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, Hi, Stephen. Yeah, I'm Stephen Ness. Uh, I'm here as a representative of the Shell Community Center, which is in the mill buildings just on the road here. And uh, our community center is focused, uh, it's a 501c7, so we're a membership base and donation base. And basically, we focus on building community around the ideas of liberty and kind of spreading the ideas of liberty and freedom throughout our community. And, uh, a couple months ago, we had a, our six month anniversary of being around, and we went to the Bison to the park there and kind of just you know, played outdoor games and ate and had fun listening to music or whatever. And uh, we just noticed that it was in some disrepair and it was nicely mowed, but like the gazebo was kind of falling apart and looks like some benches have been removed and some other ones need to be painted, that kind of thing. And so we just wanted to offer. Uh, and discuss with you the idea of having us kind of adopt that park and make those improvements on the park, uh, you know, sand down those benches, the, repair the railings that have screws sticking out of them, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe install a, uh, a grill in the park like you see in some parks where they have like a permanent grill in there so that we can do more uh, activities there, really just like uh, help out our community in that way. We'd love to have more gatherings there and that are open to the public because most of our stuff that we have at our community center is uh, wide open to the public to just come. Uh, we do a lot of like classes and debates and people work from our space and we do social stuff too, like pop ups and that kind of thing. But uh, we'd love to use the park more and in order to do that we want to you know contribute and help improve it. And, uh, so I just wanted to bring that before you guys, get your input on it, see what you think. Uh, I was trying to figure out through the website, like, is there a parks department or that kind of thing. I couldn't really spot anything like that. There's a so rec department. There's a rec department? But, but it's, it's more like for soccer games and stuff like yeah, that, right? Yeah. yeah not so. so much as that, but yeah. Yeah. Because I see, like, it's nicely mowed and that kind of thing. And there's, like, the trail there. And it seems to be a very popular park, but it just looks like 
it's at a state, from my observation, you guys have been here a lot longer than me, but uh, my observation is just kind of, uh, well, if something's in disrepair there, we're just going to take it away, and it's not improving long term, and we want to help with that. We already have manpowered uh, volunteers that can uh, help out with that because we have about 40 members in our community center and then we have a greater community we can pull from too. We can do fundraising. Uh, we have all the skill sets to do this kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess my, the question that would come to my head is um, do you, how is the town protected from liability for the work that you do? Do you have, I, I, like liability? Yeah, we have liability insurance oh, okay. as an organization. Um, I forget how much it is, but it's significant. Um, okay. Have, have you done this for other um, locations, or is this a first? No, this would be a first. Okay. Uh, our community center has only been there since November. So, but we we do lots of uh, improvements on our space already. And if you need to ask for a reference from our landlord at the uh, the mill building, you're welcome to do so. But uh, you know, we're firmly established and. I think I probably, I just kind of follow on with what Miles was saying, I probably would want to see something that there is a liability on the town's part. Um, if you maybe, like, something from your insurance company. Sure. Where, um, if something, somebody cut themselves or... Yeah, um, and we had, yeah, general liability insurance. Um, uh, perhaps if we presented some information about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, because while that policy might cover your rented space, it might not. Yeah, I don't know. I work for an insurance work. company, so I, um, risk averse. Um, <laughs> um, Paul, you? I do. I, I personally, I like the idea, and I like the idea of having the community involved in the park. I don't know if I can use disrespect, you know, but that, well, that, that round, that does need work, and I yeah. believe there's a, I believe there's a person, I think it's a job, who volunteers his time in the mall. Uh, he does, he does, yeah, you know what? You guys you know what? Okay, so he does down. He mows at the Legion Old. Okay, sorry. You should know that. Um, but I like the idea. And just, like, the only concern they have is trying to send that sign as me is, God forbid you guys are working out there and someone cuts a finger or something really bad, and then the town gets it. So, I, 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 yeah. I personally don't see it not working. I'm, I'm not speaking for you two, I'm speaking for me, but. I, I would propose that if for some reason the bare liability doesn't cover it, that we maybe get an estimate to repair it um, and consider that for the next budget season. Yeah. yeah. It's, in, it's in rough shape. Yeah, we're right. just trying to do this as a way to, you know, we don't want to cost the town any more money right. or anything like that. But when I say disrepair, I mean like, no, I when I went there one day, there was a bench that was falling apart, and then rather than it being repaired, it gets no. removed. Kind of thing. No, I we're trying to just halt that and. Uh, Okay. Um, that's very helpful. Um, I apologize that you, uh, I know we had to put you off last meeting and this, this meeting that made you wait around for uh, a while. Um, any other questions? No, no, no. Carol, do you have anything? Oh, Lorraine has a comment. I just have a question and that would be, if the, let's assume this, that this went forward and um, this group was going to, quote, adopt the park. They're saying they want to do more things there, but they said they had their own community center. Why would they do things in the park as opposed to the community center? And the other question being, um, I, I would kind of wonder, would there be a question that they think, well, because we've done this work, therefore we would get priority in the park right. about that other persons. We'd have to be an We'd have to, I think that should be looked at carefully. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, if I could answer to that. Um, we just like peeing outside sometimes. It's a beautiful park. But uh, our community center is about 1,200 square foot of space. So when we can move outdoors, it does give us more opportunity to stretch out and that kind of thing, especially on these summer days. We don't necessarily want to be indoors. And uh, I guess I'm not sure how prioritizing the space would go or how it normally works with your park or anything like that. But. Were you in, you weren't anticipating that putting up a sign that says that you've adopted the park or anything? No, nope, we don't need anything like that. Okay, so no obligations at no all. No obligations. No, we don't want to put any burden on the city in any way. We just want to help out, and it's for us it's a win-win because uh, we get to use the park as well, and you know it's.
hands on. It's just like it for us. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think we have some um, noodling to do, and um, in yeah, maybe if you can um, look into your insurance, I think that yeah, I can go forward us... that along to you tonight. Okay. Um, okay. Are, are you guys ready to? Make a decision, or do um, you I would like to see something from their okay. insurance company that that ensures that we don't have any liability. Yeah, I would assume <laughs> our insurance is just for our space alone. Okay. Would that cover <coughs> your park? Mm -hmm. I would just make that assumption. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much for coming. I, I appreciate your thanks for having me. Thank you. I'll forward that talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. Um, anyone else for community input? Yes. Yeah. I think that we're the last person to scrub. Where is he from? Um, it's an organization called Shell, and they have space in the lower middle. I believe. So does he live here? I don't know the answer to that. No. Um, I probably a good probably more than I but I mean, there are renters in the middle. I know this isn't the in the residence. Uh, the reason I came down is because um, basically I've been very concerned that over the past several years and longer than that, we haven't been keeping inventory of town property. Town property includes that park we were just talking about. Uh, as I said in my letter to you, that park was um, dedicated back in the late 70s. And at that point, a lot of people put some time and effort into putting that park together, and now it's let the town's let it go to ruin. I, I'm very concerned that we don't keep track of the property. This has been raised in prior letters from our auditors. It's been raised by myself some years ago with a letter that I attached to my letter to the board. And I'm hoping that we could try to put something together to have an actual inventory. For instance, people are thinking about what we have that we own. Um, I know there were rumors that when the town had renovated the hall that we had historical things that went missing. I don't know if that's true or not, but we do have historical things, even in our hallways now. Those things should all be inventoried and marked down. Every time we buy a computer or a copier, that should be inventoried and marked down and then if we could be depreciating it. Because if you don't do all that, um, we're not running a very, it's a pretty slip shot business, I guess I'd say. And I'd like to see if there's a way to try to get everybody to say, well, let's take a, the time to try to get this inventory going. And then as we add things or subtract things, it could be done. And I, because I'm raising an issue that's been tough and successive boards haven't been able to do it, I think that perhaps my solution is, I suggest, maybe an ad hoc committee to help the different departments in the board and everybody else put this together so we have an original inventory that people could add or subtract to, and maybe they could give some information about how you can depreciate property. Because if you don't depreciate the property, you don't know what it's worth. Um, if you don't value it at some time, you don't know what you've got, you don't know what you're losing. And the big thing that I worry about is as we buy equipment and things like that, we might buy computers and copiers. If we don't keep track, all of a sudden we lose track of them and it's as if we never paid for them. And that's just not helpful. We've got to have a system to do that. So those are my thoughts on it, and I hope that we can deal with that. And I thank you for listening to me beef again. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, um, I appreciate your comments. It's an, it's an idea I've had for quite some time, and it's just on the long list of things that um, we haven't been able to get to. But I like the idea of an ad hoc committee. Um, I think if we could do that, it would make sense, because because I know everybody's always stressed, and it's really hard for you guys, because I know you end up having to be more reactive than proactive, because there's just so much stuff going <laughs> so rather than be in that position, I, that was my, um, that's my solution. I don't know how much of a solution it is, but that's my thought. I mean, even the cannon ball and the cannon and the statuaries in the park, that's all town property. We should be inventorying it somewhere. <laughs> I have a couple questions. Um, one is, um, do other towns of our size do this? 
Well, all I know is that our auditors say that, that if you don't have a, a list or a record of property, that that is a problem. They've listed it as one of the issues in our letters that we get each year from the auditors. Um, it's, it's a deficiency. Did you send me one of those letters? It's or in the last town report. report. It's right in the okay. town report. Right. You can look at it. It's like at the end it talks it's, about it's property that has more than... It has. It talks about property that's at least uh, has a life expectancy of at least a year. It's not, you know, we're buying paper clips real there. So, and that's going to be my next question: is how do you, where do you start? You know, do you inventory every hammer that they have in the highway department, every garbage can? Well, again, I think that, you know, I'm not an accountant. I'm, all I'm saying is that you certainly, I would think that things. We probably have some idea about certain things, like we know what kind of vehicles we buy and stuff like that. That makes sense. But we don't really keep track of the other stuff. I think and that's the really worrying to me, that we're not really keeping a good track of it. And as I say, somewhere along the line, we should be saying the quilt in the hallway, the stove in the hallway, all of these things, they're worth something. The whiteboard, you know, obviously we know if somebody took it, but at the same time, if you don't have anything to show you, you know, we got it, this, and then we did this with it, whatever, it's, it's kind of not a good thing. So, to, to your point, I think um, around dollar value, it would be important to have an accompanying document of some sort, like a policy that would um, outline the parameters of what's included in the list and what you're doing with the list. And, it would be good, for example, should there be a fire, we wouldn't remember all of the things that would need to be replaced, so you're not getting compensated for their value. Um, but it's also a way to manage items that don't qualify to be on the CIP because of their dollar value, but it would still remind you to replace them or maintain them. Um, I think we need to get um, either have a discussion with the auditor about things that should be audited or dollar values or other towns or how they approach it because other than that it's where do you begin and, um, yeah i mean they, they say it's life expectancy of a year right uh, and then, but no dollar values right. so, so every share. single so a hammer and a garbage right yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. exactly yeah. so i mean do you have each department head go through every single thing in their department i i would suggest it? not a department head because in my experience the people um, who live in an environment don't see what's in their environment. So I think the benefit of a committee is having people who have never seen things in the environment before to say, what's that? Oh yeah, that's the, the other thing, you know. Um, I'd like to get feedback yeah. from other towns on how they approach it. Maybe there, there's, you know, somebody, um, they have an approach or a process to it already. Um, and I'd be, I'd be willing to volunteer to reach out to them. Um, that will be helpful, and also I'll, I'll reach out on the list serve and see if anybody will okay. respond with what they do. Is, are you okay with Kim? Mm -hmm. um, thank uh, excellent. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I, well, I whatever you that. can do. Yeah, and you know, maybe we s <laughs> you don't start with hammers, but you start with trucks. And right. I can see things of like real value. Um, yeah, but, but the, the, where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? It's, it's, it's tricky. And somewhere along the line, I agree with Caroline, that, you know, for insurance purposes, even if you have somebody that they do is they take the camera and they say, click, 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 mm -hmm. That's click, very click. I mean, that's another way to inventory the little stuff mm -hmm. so you have something for insurance. But, um, I, I see that could be cumbersome for, for people like George to have to drag out all his tools and you know, take pictures. So, Feel there, like there must be some process around this that other towns have in place. I think pictures might be helpful. The thing about tools is that while they may be individually insignificant, if you had like a disgruntled employee who emptied out a drawer, that could have a large dollar value. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lorraine, for that. Uh, any other community input? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna handle George first since he's been patiently waiting here. Um, we're ready to. No, I just, I don't have any PO. I didn't make any PO. Okay. Up, but I brought up where I brought up all those. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about um, doing them or all the I think it's a good idea. Um, those are 
project, so if you can remind us, it's uh, Hall, Kellen Drive. Yeah, I'm trying to get these guys on the schedule before we have the same fence. You know, it's uh, Hall Road, 200 feet of Hall Road, that is the town's portion of 6,800 dollars. Is that right at the end, George, where it's dirt, where it turns to dirt? No, you see where the hot dog changed? Yes. It's from there to the end. Because I, I went down that road and I said, this road doesn't seem all that bad, but where they turned to dirt. Until we get the wrong Okay. okay. It, 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 it was pavement and now it's just like... Yeah, it's still pavement. Crumbling. Yeah. He's not proposing to pave the dirt. The dirt would right. stay right. dirt. It's right. just where this the pavement down. changes right. until you get to the dirt. Okay. Up to that last right where you have to get it. Not the one beyond, but there's a paved right wing. There's one guy that's been out of question a couple of times. Uh, this is proposed for this year? Yeah, no, this was well, we can get it in their schedule now, it's because of course it's going to be scheduling now as well. And the town hall parking lot is the other one. Mm -hmm. And that's just the front? Right? Uh, correct, it's from digging out the front up to where it widens out and it overlay just the side. It's, it's not that bad shape, the front's pretty rough. And what's the price tag? What, how much? Like 68? Seventy-eight. All oh, the other ones. Right, sixty-eight for the first one. Yeah. And then we had six thousand. We had seven thousand left in sidewalks. We finished down to Main Street. Okay. And his his quote was six thousand. So. Okay. Um. I can attach these to two POs if you want to. Or if you, if you um. Want to what's what's the? Have, I can make them up and then you can sign them next week if you want. So first of all, the sidewalk money will come out of the, the I don't know the name of the fund. The sidewalk more in our school last year. Yep. Um, but we have, we will have paving dollars um, available after you've done Slido. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We should have more than enough to come up and pay that money for some other stuff. So. so I just want to make sure we have, what we propose and we propose and Calvin, Hall, and... No, I'm sorry. I said Calvin. It's not Calvin. Oh, okay. Which, uh, oh. Hall Road. Yep. 200 feet of Hall Road. Yep. For 6,800. 6,800. Yep. We serve as some of the sidewalks going down to Main Street. Main Street to uh, the front surprise. Right, yeah. And uh, the front parking lot here from, from the portico right around back to PD, but they're going to dig up. Okay. Uh, to the side, the side five one side. So this is an addition to Sligo Road, which was already approved. Yeah, so Did you have a cost of coming? Did you have a, a, a I think the discussion was we wanted to wait yeah, to coordinate that. Summer's going to be doing it next year. They're planning on doing it next year. Yeah, yeah. so we did the summer. Summer's 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 and then we do the rest. Okay. We're trying to get... Because I know we've gotten two or three complaints. We did a section of uh, Calvin that we've had last year. Yeah. But, uh, it, I mean, I haven't got no quotes. If you want me to get no, a quote, no, no, stay where you are right now. Stay where you are. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm curious, what do we have left on the road? You know, well, when we finish, as soon as they finish Sligo, I'll know more. But, uh, so that was 152? 
whether we can do some of the federal money that's coming in to help do it. Um, I think that's still going to make it kind of be close to 255. I think that was going to run out of time, but just no. Okay. One more question. Yep. So, um, is this, are these really high priority projects with the dollars that we have left? And is this the best use of our paving dollars and the most important projects to get done based on, because I haven't driven every road. Um, so, well, just I have, always. Okay. And, no, I shouldn't speak for you, but I'm you got to sell away some of the roads. Yes, you always wanted to, it should be the most traveled road in town. Because of the dump being there. Uh, and it's, now it's all it's breaking up pretty bad now by the other end. Of I've been told by people that have businesses on that road that it was never properly built. It was used with gravel stuff. They used all that stuff that was part of that project and it was never paid properly and stuff. So they began to get a shot to show that. Right. So Kim could be, Kim's probably maybe get another question. Like, look at Jesse Bell. Go to Jesse. Now, I'm not saying it's the best solution to move to Jesse Bell and go the whole length of it. Part of it, the first part and the last part of it, isn't too bad. But when you come down with that, like that metal fabrication places, it's all falling apart. Yeah, so, one of the questions I think Jim's getting at is would it make sense to spend 50 grand to fix that bad part and not spend 75 to fix the whole thing at the time or something like that, right? Um, just priorities. Yeah. I'm just questioning you know, our priorities. Yeah. Well, yeah, the big one is Sligo, just big one. So, we haven't had a chance to sit down with the last board. We, since you've been here, we have not sat down and prioritized any roads. So it's been my, you know, what I've suggested. Right. And I've been wanting, you know, we need to get to sit down and go over what you people want to do before we go any further. I mean, I, I suggested Jesse Doe this year because of the condition it was in. And, uh, but I want to sit down and so we've, we've had help in the past from Stratford Regional Planning to, to do this exercise, figure out which roads make sense, and um, that plan, I it still exists, but it's now out of date. Um, it's, it's several years out of date. We were a pilot program for that, and there's money in the budget to do it again with them, and I'm waiting to hear from them about an updated quote to do it, but they take our road segments rather than bolt roads um, and, and describe their condition but also are they on a bus route or are they a commuter route and how many people live there and how often is it accessed and does it have a lot of commercial traffic and all these other things in addition to its condition and then also um, suggest different maintenance protocols for the different segments so that you're not always regrading and starting from scratch, but sometimes you're overlaying, sometimes you're crack sealing, so that um, in theory every year you have balanced budget dollars and a like um, an objective priority list for those flat dollars. Um, I, I guess I just, I want to feel confident that our priorities are right for these dollars. Um, I've driven a few of the roads, I haven't driven all of them, uh, so... Well, that's why I lost the field tonight anyway, so... Okay. Maybe that can be part of our discussion next week. You know, yeah, I, I think it should be. But your roads didn't work. Yeah. Okay. Well, I drove from Picaris, I was with a friend of mine, I was surprised that Picaris was in the shape. So. Yeah. That's not great. I'll probably make a commitment to drive our roads, like, before the next yeah, meeting. And I, I believe I gave you a list of the way we... Yeah. Go with George, he knows the bad roads. He can show you the bad roads. <laughs> he knows the bad parts of town. Yeah. Um, Great, thank Okay, you. so I think we're going to nope, hold that's, off that's on tonight, I'll, do a little I'll more I'll research. Want to be over okay. But, but a quick question really on Sligo. At this point, we don't really have a choice because we've already done you know. Well, we've, we've already got a signed contract, so and they're really ready to do it. Yeah, they're really that. That's that's ready to do it. Yeah. They've already ground the end. That one's yeah. kind of a non. Yep. Yeah. That, that one's one. just too much. But yeah. I'm just thinking for Paul, though. Like, you know, for the board can change its mind however you want to change your mind, but um, then he's got to get quotes, and that delays everything, and all your contractors are pulling up your schedule. So the more you think about it, the yeah. less likely it is that anything's going to happen this year. 
Yeah. That's why I said probably by next meeting we really should try to at least strategize about you know an approach for priority on the roads. Sure. Okay. With our with our budget here coming in in March, we're at a better advantage than most towns where their budgets don't come in until June. We have the early contracts with these paving contracts, and we have a better chance of getting stuff done in the summer. Are they kind of blanket contracts where we're not bound to a particular road? No, usually if we get quotes on the roads that we had talked about, you know, or, or you know, I, before I go, uh, I'll get, I get quotes on the roads I thought needed it the most, and we decided to do that route. Okay. Roads are all different widths, and sometimes you want an inch and a half, and sometimes you want two inches, and sometimes it has to be completely really graded, and sometimes not. So it's not to be in touch for okay. 30 plus years. Slightly. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, George. Okay. So, uh, 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 the other thing is, uh, I don't know if you all know, we had had surgery um, two weeks ago. We had a I don't think we should talk about this. Uh, I'm just saying he's doing okay. 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 No, I'm not saying I'm doing okay. Yeah. Okay, but, but he's uh, you know, he's doing okay. He's violated his privacy. And he's, he's back to doing things around the house, and he's actually on vacation this week. So. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, no, I and anything to make. No. No. The machine has been ordered, but God knows when it's coming. So. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, awesome. Thanks, George. All right. Okay. Chief Rutherford. There's one thing I want to address. Can I get started this morning from what you sent me? And I just want to get everybody on the same page so we're not getting more disgruntled emails. Do they know what I was, I was not, about? I'm not I being know. disgruntled for clarity. Um, oh, no, I mean, as people are interested in concern. Oh, oh, about washing truck? Yeah. Okay. Okay. See, and that's that's where we're missing the point. Okay. This is not about washing fire trucks. Okay. Um, I understand the concern, and I know the town's been battling with the, the signs and the, and the ban and whatnot. But um, we don't wash fire trucks as I'm not supposed to do at this time of year. No. Yesterday we had an incident, and whenever we have an incident that has any sort of fire fighting uh, genre with it. We need to make sure we take care of ourselves afterwards. By that, I mean if we go to a fire someplace and we get our gear dirty and ourselves dirty and equipment dirty, it has to be decomposed. 100% clean for the next usage. Because if I decide, oh, you can't use water, so I'll leave everything dirty. Every time any member, any public, anybody walks in the fire station, they are now being exposed to the potential carcinogens. So what we're washing when we're out in front of the fire station is either equipment, gear, men or vehicles. Vehicles being the last of the priority. If it's a little dirty, it's a little dirty. But again, you get $2 million of equipment and you don't really want to sit there looking a mess. So basically what happened the other day is we had a uh, motorcycle fire up the cornfield across from the fire station. And we had to stretch a line with fire. While doing that, we had to use foam, dragging it through the mud, over the railroad tracks and whatnot. So when we came back, we had to clean up our equipment. Some of the guys get themselves dirty that we're using the line. And that's a very small example. Now, if we go to a structure fire in place, that's another whole complete example. We carry on the fire trucks a bucket that carries a hose so that before we get back on the fire truck or we're leaving an incident or we've been in a fire or exposed to smoke or any of the carcinogens, because that's what's there every time we show up, is we wash ourselves off before we bring that material inside the fire truck. Because now we're right in the closed area and we're riding. You know, maybe it's 10 minutes from Nova, or it's 30 minutes from Nova, or we're all sitting there exposed to that stuff. So initially, get the heavy volume of that stuff off. When we return to the station, we finish cleaning that and deconning and disinfecting every bit of that so that it's ready to go for the next time. And we're not making ourselves exposed. Um, the biggest thing in the fire service up to like six years ago, that was the biggest issue that was uh, killing firefighters was cardiac arrest and heart attack. That has shifted gears in the last six years to cancer. That is the number one issue. And it's big in the fire service, and we are mandated by a lot of things that we do that we have to maintain is to reduce as much exposure as we can to our people. Uh, and I constantly and I highly believe in that, and I can't do it inside the firehouse because I have no drainage in part of it. So it has to be done out of the front range. It's done judiciously. We're not just wasting water. 
because we have to clean all the clean equipment and everything has to be ready to go for the next time out with the least amount of exposure. So that's what we do and that's why we do it. So, I, guess my so I don't live in the water district, so I don't really know what the ban is. It's on washing it, it includes vehicles. washing vehicles and it's a number of things. So so this was precipitated by a phone call from a resident oh, to right. a town employee because they saw something and they were just wondering because it doesn't make sense with the water ban. So so that prompted my communication yeah. around the water that's ban. That's right. So I guess at this it's point I'm wondering if it makes sense to either meet with the water sewer cool. commissioners or else just um, explain to them the view of the board once you discuss and decide what that is and say this is what we're doing and why we're doing it or do we need to you know and, and see if they want next steps or, or just I guess I, I'm just sort of maybe we need some communication okay yep so in my opinion they're not out there washing up Personal, <laughs> personal vehicle. This is this is uh, that goes on as we help on maintenance uh -huh. of the equipment, which happens to be a fire truck. So uh, yeah, yeah, you're gonna hose off the guys' safety issue, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. all you guys are outside of the district, so right. you're not you're over on the other side. I'm the only one that's in it. So, quick question. I know I haven't seen the latest, but with all this latest rain, I know there's still a drop, but it's gone from down to moderate. Or we're, we're in moderate now. Or fully in moderate. So, so some parts of the state are almost out now, I read. The, the southern part is out, and then um, we're in a moderate area, and then there's a more severe area in the, in the far north. But that doesn't take into account, like, the last week. Like, you know, for this week and part of last week, we had a lot of rain. So right. I don't know um, when that was last. I mean, they updated, I think, every few days. Yeah. But I noticed some ponds that were low. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. So I think my, my point is, yeah. I don't think we need special permission. No, it, I mean, for, it, for as long as not, you know, as long as it's not, it's not know, it's seven fire trucks out there, we're uh, watching we're, the we're we're dealing with we're another right. governmental entity that set a rule about watching cars. I don't think that's what we're looking to do. You know, maybe out of courtesy, we send them a note and say, hey, we got this feedback, that's not what's happening. Is I don't know, that's my opinion. Is this a water and sewer issue? It's their policy. So it's the town that at this point is not following a district policy. You just kind of between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, there's name. The reason why I wanted to come and just get everybody's opinion and understand and, and know that this is happening. And I'm not, you know, asking you to say, you know, maybe you guys, oh, we have to do it. There's no way we can totally shut down our operation and not keep our, our employees protected. That, that's the bottom line. Should and they be in doing. this discussion so they understand? Water people? Probably. Because it's an educational issue. That's what this is. It is. It, it's not, oh, they're washing fire trucks. No, we're not washing fire trucks. You've got to understand what we're doing and why we're doing it and what the repercussions are if we don't do it. So if that includes them, I mean, I know it's an educational thing. I mean, I'll drive into the person's driveway and knock on their door and explain to them why we do what we do. Because that's what this is. It's not an abuse thing. It's just, oh, well, they're only watching the fire truck. I mean, the optics aren't on the crate. Um, there's a drought. Um, but it's exactly this piece of information. And maybe we put it up on the town website. Like, hey, we've gotten some comments. Um, this is what's actually going on. Um, I think that's the place to start. Maybe that's the place why, to start. why this is being done. Um, and as a courtesy, some of the, the water commissioners. Um, we might get them to. Um, update yeah. their right, right. I see Pat walking by all the time by the fire. If I see him here the next few days, I will grab him. No, it wasn't a water commissioner that. Um, it was a resident, okay. and it was a different town employee who took the call, so and who didn't leave contact information. Okay. So I don't think we know who it is. I think if the water and sewer people bless this, then um, then we just explain exactly in the way you did. Educational um, That's right. Yeah, because I don't want to leave that stuff in here. So why you can't use it? Well, if I leave a dirty firehouse and I get a guy that comes in three years later and says, well, I got cancer and I got it for me. We're exposing ourselves to somewhere we don't want to go. So if we take every precaution, which is what we do in the firehouse, to make sure that none of this stuff can come back and bite us later on, 
that's what this is about. It's not and, about the watch. Well, they have their own website, so they could also. Um, they could do the same thing, throw something that if you see if you the fire department or whatever, it's just for, it's for safety reasons, is what it's for. Right, it's for health and safety. You put it that way. Um, it's not so much for the trucks, which is, I'm sure, what everybody sees, but there's more to it. That's why I wanted to come here and just kind of lay this out to everybody that you understood or if you see it or you heard it, that you weren't in the dark, you weren't getting blindsided. Um, yes, there was a fire department. Yes, there was after the incident we had yesterday. We had to take care of equipment. I mean, I can leave foam inside a hose and not hose it out. But it reduces the service life of that hose by about 40%. So if I can use a hose for 10 years, I just got four years off it because I'm not treating it right. I'm not getting it back doing the yeah. service. Because the foam is an acid and it eats it, so we have to prolong what we have by like maintaining the best thing in the water we can. And that's my clean. I can make a motion that we get an approval from the water and sewer department to authorize them to maintain their vehicles. Okay, I can tell you that. But the only thing I'll say is there may, um, there may not even be an issue in the next week if Right. It drops off enough, and it's lit. Hopefully, it goes right. away. Oh, we can make that motion for now. Um, I've I, I got a feeling it's there's a lot. I, of water I would for just it. change your motion slightly of, and change the word approval to awareness. Um, that we make them aware because we're we're not going to stop. We, Nor can you necessarily change their policy because they may decide the answer is still no, you know, the policy still stands. It doesn't mean that you're going to end up agreeing at the end, but you can say, we're doing it anyway, and this is why. So we've got a motion on the table, I just want to make sure, so are you okay with an amendment to your motion? No. Uh, um, I don't want to have a war between committees. Right. Um, Right, that's okay. the only thing. Is, okay. Yeah. So it would be nice to maybe get them in the room and have them hear the argument and then get their authorization. Have so, them buy in. So, what would the board think if maybe Mark and I attended the next commissioner's meeting with their permission and talked to them about okay. the board's feeling about the need for this and, and encourage them to? amend their policy to allow for municipal vehicle washing. Sure. Okay. Is that right? That's, that's perfect. That's the only yeah. input I have to that. I don't think we should be focusing just on the words vehicle washing. Exactly. I was going to say that. It's, that, it's, that produces it's, the wrong. Yeah. It's health and safety. Understood. But it's vehicle washing that's in their policy on the sign okay. that exactly. people are taking issue with. Yeah. Like the washing card. Yeah. 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 But we're also doing Yes, and that's why that was being done as it was yesterday. And if we get a fire call in the next 20 minutes, which we almost did, it'll happen again. Yeah. 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 Perhaps you can ask them to update the website to maybe make an exception. Yeah. So, um, do we want to, we can vote on this motion? Um, do we need a motion? I can retract it. I thought you tried to go. Okay. So, I retract the motion. Okay, and if you can retract your second, I'll make sure I retract my second. Take some time. Okay. okay, so we're good. Okay. Have a next steps. Thank you, Mark, for coming in. I yeah, appreciate I mean, the, it. It happened today. Yeah. I'm yeah no, I. Festers, so um, right. that, so. Absolutely. And then, I don't know how long the commission be. I don't know what their <laughs> schedule is now. I think they were doing every other week, at least for a while, but. I'll check in and I'll find out when the next meeting is and then I'll check in yeah, with well, you. What did you just send what was sent an email and just explain the situation saying, hey, we know you have this, but uh, because of a safety issue with the fire department, at times when they go to a fire, when they come back, they have to, you don't have to even say wash, you can say decon. Decon. Yes. So I think that's a good start. And, and if, so they, if they want to talk about it, then yeah. they can attend, but it may be as simple as email. That's all. Yeah. You know, I mean, Mark's guaranteeing us it's not like, uh, you know, he goes to a fire and they got to do it, but it's not like, like the truck's been sitting for a week and they went to a fire and it's like, hey, look, it's got a little dust on it, and then I'm pulling out to make them wax and make it first. Yeah, that would do. We don't use the water. We got other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we only do that. Like I said, we start that process the minute we leave it. It's, okay. I don't want to breathe that stuff anymore. All right. Nobody does. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I see John is back. I don't know if he's back.
good. I was oh, you know, okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's let's get back to our agenda here. Uh, Bicentennial Park, we've discussed um, committee appointments. We have a bunch of um, committee members that are are up for. The only one, one thing I saw would be is yeah. Yes, that's, I apologize. For that's that. okay, but there, I don't know if there's a land. Uh, I don't know if she was name. ever appointed. Yeah, she was. Was she? Yeah. Did you have her last name? No. She did. It's Barlow. It's her married name. She was in Barlow. Okay, so Lynn Barlow. Yes. Okay, so we could add that. She was not. And then we'll cross out for Lynn. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And that's it. But I see. All right, so I'm just going to read the list, and then at the end, if someone can make a motion to um, to appoint the, the members as uh, presented on conservation, um, Tamara Nudzel. Nedzikowski. Nedzikowski, thank you. Um, conservation, Lorraine Hansen as an alternate. Uh, conservation, Bruce York as an alternate. Highway safety, Perry Knowles. Um, planning, Kevin Hayes, Sue Natasti, Harry Knowles as an alternate, and then we have a vacancy still as an alternate there. Uh, recreation, Michael Blau, um, Sue Leopold, David Josh Coe, and Lynn Barlow. Um, Stormwater, Kate Preston, Michael Point, Zachary Little, ZBA, um, Sue Natasti, Nathaniel Leach as an alternate and on library, um, Lorraine Hanson as an alternate. I make a motion to appoint all of these members to the board. Okay. And I'll second that. All right, any discussion on those appointments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, okay. And Caroline, if you'll do the honors of notifying the, these um, valuable volunteers, and we really do thank them for their service. Um, facilities director. So this was a position that was approved in our latest budget, um, and I think we were targeting six hours a week at $30 an hour. Do those numbers sound right, Caroline? Yes, and it's budgeted to start June 1st. So okay. since it's not June 1st, you have flexibility with the wages and hours within that line. <coughs> and what is, what is the, do you know the line item? I, what the I have the budget cost? right here okay, since I just looked at that. Um, I think it was $5,400 or something like that. Um, $4,680. Okay, thank you. $4,680. So, as you've seen from Caroline's recent emails, we've, we've had a spout of um, maintenance issues that have resulted in uh, urgent repair. Um, so the air conditioner, the, I don't, the, yeah, I guess the... And then we've had leaking toilets downstairs and upstairs. Leaking toilets. Um, so the idea, and I'm, I'm giving this narrative for, for everyone's benefit, but I know, Kim, you weren't, you weren't on the board at the time. Um, that this person would be tasked with visiting each facility, cataloging, and maybe this person could do our inventory. Um, like, what, what do we have? What's you know, create a schedule of maintenance so that we not we're not constantly surprised. We have things, uh, air conditioners that no one knows where the filters are or how to change them. So just one point person um, that would handle all ten facilities. Now, whether we think that's six hours a week, um, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure, you know, it's hard you to tell. It seems excessive. The way I look at it is, really, highway should be able to take care of themselves. They should. And fire. But are they? And fire should be able to take care of but themselves. But are they? No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying <laughs> they should. Um, that is a good point. Um, especially like for fire and police, we can't have just anybody in those departments doing things. I mean, there has to be, there's got to be security around that. Oh, sure. This the current janitor is 
CJ is certified so that he is able to be in the police department and he goes in and cleans on Tuesdays. He's the same person um, who cleans upstairs on Thursdays. So um, I think, and, and the, the fire station is, is code access. So, um, so they can... So you could assign an employee with, I, I think that's about communication with the department head about when you're here, do these things, but don't touch this over here, um, and make sure everybody's on the same page about... And I don't think anyone's advocating that they would be there un, un, alone. Necessarily, un, yeah. Unsupervised. But let me just tell you the list of problems we had with the fire department in the last year. A new furnace, um, the, the chimney is unlined, electrical issues, um, garage door issues, so they should be able to maintain that facility, but that's not their expertise, I, I think is the point. Um, Are you saying this person's going to be qualified to do electrical and those sort of things? Or, or coordinate. I think coordinate and at least qualified to identify an issue or identify the fact that it looks old and maybe ought to get evaluated. Um, what kind of certifications are we looking for in this person? Do we have a job description? No. <laughs> and we oh, certainly need one. <laughs> yes. okay. so, so I would actually propose and, uh, that instead of making this person an employee, that we just like find someone to do, get an initial list. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know the right answer because as I'm talking, I'm like, okay, so we have an initial list that sits where and who's going to look at it again. Um, I look at it as if we hired some of the facilities manager and they were fishing. I mean, six hours a week after about four weeks, that person would have nothing to do the rest of the year. year. Right. And you're not going to get somebody so, qualified at $30 an hour to do some of those Well, things. and so maybe it's four hours or three hours a week at 40 or $50 an hour. If, if that makes more sense, and I don't know that it does, but... Uh, and I don't think we need to decide this tonight, no. but um, I, I want to get it on people's radar because this has continually come to, to bite us. Can um, we put it on next week's planning sure. session? Sure. We're going to be here till midnight, <laughs> yes. We um, have to prioritize. <laughs> we have to prioritize. Um, yes, absolutely. I, I came up with a different number. Fifty-two uh, weeks, six hours a week, thirty dollars a week. It was ninety-three sixty. It, so it's prorated for six months. Only six months. Yes. Okay. To start June first. Okay. That was the okay, so budget. Okay. Got it. Um, I really think we kind of need to um, identify what the expectation is, what the qualifications are. I completely agree. For this person. Okay. Yes. All right. Great. Thank you. Okay. So we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about it next week. Um, and, and come up with some sort of plan. Um, abatements. So I, uh, the tax collector sent you a note earlier today um, with a couple of abatements, and uh, Carolyn, I might need your help in describing what I'm seeing here, uh, because these these have been these have been. Uh, They've apparently been deeded to the town um, for non-payment <coughs> taxes, um, and then as town-owned property would not be subject to tax. So there's a tax bill that was issued erroneously um, in the amounts of 112 or 114 dollars or, or something that in that um, vicinity for these two properties owned by the same people off of. The Karis Drive, um, directly across from the two apartments in the bend in the road there. So the abatement process usually is um, that the tax collector identifies people that haven't paid, communicates with them, tries to get them to pay. Um, and so, wait, we're abating these because we took them. Right, so now that they are town owned, they're not subject to taxation, okay. so the tax bills, she can't write off money. $5. Right, right. Yeah, so she needs the board to write it off. So what do we have to do this every year? 
Yeah. No, because this is the, the only future year. assessing will be changed to reflect the fact that they're town owned and tax exempt. So okay. bills Thank won't you. get but a that, that makes sense. I was just making sure that. Yeah, because we did these last year, if you, if you recall. Um, yes. But they did eventually pay. So we, we really just need to, at this point. Um, well, those two. So, so the note that she's writing there reflects that they are owned by the town. And last year, I don't know that they were. Like this is, in other words, this is news to me that these two properties are now owned by the town. Okay. I was not aware of that. So at this point, I think it's worth communicating with the tax collector around the process, and the board has to decide what to do with this property. Um, and also, the previous owners have a right to buy it back within a certain time frame and some things like that. So I think we need to um, understand more like when the official date of this is and engage with an attorney to make sure that we are um, protecting the town's liability around the previous owner's rights to buy it back before we um, were to sell it if that's what the board decides to do. Okay. So what's the action tonight to, to abate these tax bills? That is the action she's asking for tonight. Okay. But then there's a subsequent... Um, sure, of course. I don't um, understand what the, what, why we wouldn't sign that tonight. I'm not suggesting that you wouldn't sign it. Okay. I guess I'm just um, looking for more information because it says that she took those properties by tax deed. In other words, they've gotten to the point where um, there's no more payment arrangements. You, you've reached right. the end so of the line. Right, but we signed up on this last year that, that people were not paying it and we were... I think they paid last year. They, I think they, they paid. Like, like, we haven't taken minute. a property by tax deed in probably six years. So, um, I, I, the property, the, the tax bills absolutely need to be abated, um, but I just want to bring to the board's attention that there's more going on around the idea of taking a property by tax deed that, that we need to familiarize ourselves with to be sure that um, we're being compliant with because some of it is within the realm of the tax collector but I believe there's another part of this situation that lies with the select board to manage as the assessors. And then the discussion around what is what is the will of the board around what the ultimate goal would be with these properties. Mm -hmm. Okay. So don't let don't let the rec committee know about these properties. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Um, I'm not sure that they're desirable in that way. They have a very they have. No, I know. I've been by the property. I know exactly where they are. I've been by it, but it's still some town land, and if we do own it, and it's tax abated, then. Sometime down in the future, it may not be bad to have a couple of seats, benches there or something like that, because you kind of want to look at the water. Well, and, and you can go walk beautiful. down there into the ravine and yeah. there may be So I was just thinking about that. Rec, something for the rec community to mm -hmm. focus on. Okay. So for now, I think we... Um, we determine if there, we have any liability in approving this, right? I don't think you do. I think at this point, the process is done. You own them. That's not the question. It's just... And so because the town owns the property, you really wouldn't have a reason not to abate the taxes because you wouldn't charge yourself, the town, as a okay. non, you know, the taxes. So it's just what we do with the properties going forward. Yes, and making sure that very soon we engage with an attorney to, um, so that the board understands what your role and responsibilities are and time frame, because there are time frames mm -hmm. about when you have to do certain actions. Okay. around notifying the previous owners of whatever you're going to do and things like that. Okay. So for for tonight, I think we just need a motion to um, approve the abatements. Approve the I make a motion to approve the abatements. Okay, I'll second that. Um, do we need to say like what the lot numbers are and that, Jazz? Um, I think that's a good I idea. I've got the lot numbers, but I don't have the amounts. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve an abatement for $114. For map 14 13 30, entitled Land Only to Caris Drive for the tax year 2021. Okay. Why don't we do them one at a time? Um, so if you can. I'll second that. Second that. Okay, awesome. Um, any further discussion? 
Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll also make a motion to abate $112 from map 14-13-29 land only, the Karis Protection 2021. Okay. I have a second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Sign. Um, sign, please. And then, subsequent to that, um, if it's all right with the board, I'm going to reach out to the tax collector and get some more information about when this took place. Okay. Um, and find out what I know. She knows quite a lot, obviously, about the process and see what she knows about um, next steps. But I think. I mean, um, they might have told her. I'm not paying, just take them, right? Like that. Well, is well, right, but, but that does not negate the town's responsibility to notify them at certain intervals that they okay. have, you know, a certain amount of time to buy it back and, and things like that. So, um, do you want me to get in touch with an attorney now, or do you want to wait and? Wait. I, I think we can wait. Okay. Um, so, let's start with a conversation with the tax collector. Okay, moving right along to ARPA funds. Um, I think you all saw the, the email from um, the Water Sewer District mm -hmm. um, with their request. Um, I, I don't recall the specifics, but they, they sound like um, worthy projects. Um, we 10,000 total? They're a little for one. That was just one. That was one project. That's they the had well. two or three. She didn't have a quote on the on the other one. Okay. Um, so for tonight, uh, or sorry, I lost track of my lost track of my pieces of paper. Um, so there's a schedule that we need to follow if if we're in agreement that we want to accept the ARPA funds, um, and there's some hoops we need to jump through, and we need to do that by August 14th, 14th, 15th, um, soon. I think 18th. 18th. Sorry, yeah, that's what I was going to say. 18th. I think. Yeah. Yes. I think we're all right. Um, so tonight, I I think we, if we can get an agreement that um, we want to accept them. Um, and the, the major conditions are that all employees sign a conflict of interest. I, kind of um, I don't think that's limited to employees, by the way. I okay. think that's all representatives of the town. Um, I don't. I don't see the the list like in black and white. Um, it, it is. It is part of this five-page thing okay. here, um, which is in your email, but you didn't all get copies of all of it. But number eight. Um, that you must maintain a conflict of interest policy. Um, so recipient and sub-recipients must disclose in writing. Um, so I, you can consult an attorney what that means, but I, I think that's probably so board water members sewer. as well as, well, and absolutely water sewer. If, if you are to um, allow these funds to be used for water sewer purposes, I would um, bring this to the commissioner's attention to say, we would hope that you would um, follow all these strings as well. Otherwise, perhaps you wouldn't consider sharing the funds because ultimately the town is liable for following these strings. So if there's a conflict of interest on their board or with their employees, then the town is liable for that if, if they're not likewise following all these uh, so I have a question. Um, where <clears throat> Water and Sewer is a separate entity from the town, do we have any authority to do this for them? Yes, you do. In fact, they're not receiving funds on their own, so the authority is entirely with the town, whether or not and to what degree to share the funds. So the school is receiving their own <laughs> funds. Mm -hmm. um, so why, if they're a separate entity too, why can they receive funds but not water and sewer? It's about topic. It's not about being a different government entity. Okay. Um, so for some reason, because um, and this is not just Rollinsford, but for any village district. Village districts qualify for funds, but the way they're qualifying funds is by population through the census, which is the same as Rollinsford. So because they're completely within Rollinsford, even though they're a separate government entity, um, the state, I think, does not want to take the time to figure out how much would be divided between governmental entities. I mean, that, that's a great question for the state, but... Um, 
they're not getting their separate funds, but they are eligible for town funds, and yet the town gets to decide what to do with the funds ultimately. Okay. So do we have a plan for these funds um, that we're signing up for? Because we're putting some processes in place, and we don't really have a plan yet. Indeed, and that's by design, not my design, their design. Um, the first step is you have to decide whether or not to accept the conditions. Um, and, and maybe talking about whether or not Project X or Project Y is worth the conditions, that may be a worthy discussion, because maybe all the ideas that you can come up with don't make it worth jumping through the hoops. That, that's a worthy discussion. But if you're not going to have that discussion, then it starts with, here are the hoops, sign on to the idea of taking the funds, and then you have until 2024 to have lots of workshops with lots of people and public hearings around what are we going to do with the funds. So you have a lot of time <coughs> that way, and then you have until 2026 to expend the funds that you've identified up until 2024. So there's no urgency about any of that. Okay. It's this. When do we have to start jumping for hoops, though? So, before you accept funds. You're agreeing okay. that before okay. you accept funds, you're going to okay. adopt and implement and maintain, a which we have a conflict of interest policy, but we're just going to have to make sure the board finds it to be up to date and, you know, and then make everybody okay. sign it. And so, we need to make sure before we actually um, request the funds that we update our conflict of interest policy. We don't have a timeline to do that until we start requesting funds. That is my understanding, but it's not just that. You know, Texting while driving for town employees, seatbelt use for town employees. There are a number of other, you know, making, you're agreeing that you're going to keep proper records and you're going to keep them up until, you know, at least five years after the last expenditures were made. Um, th there's five pages worth of. Can I'm just concerned about signing up for a whole bunch more work before we know what we're getting so, into. And that's so a great can, point. Can we sign up? You know, let's just say, I read some of it, actually, I read page 19 of it. Um, if there's a bucket of, I don't know what it is, if there's a bucket of $100,000 for an officer, okay, and we say, we want to use some of the funds because we can use this 10 grand to help the water and sewer, we got this 10, 10 grand for storm, and maybe 10 grand for sound, so out of the 100 grand we're allocated, we can, we, we want to pull 30. Can we do that, or is it all or none? You can do as much or as little as you okay. want, and whatever you don't take will go back to the. It won't go back to the state. It, it's it's about we um, will submit for reimbursement after we expend funds. They will reimburse us, and for any unexpended, unencumbered funds, the state will reallocate them. So, for example, if you are not using a hundred thousand dollars of your authorized funds, then the state will take that along with whatever other municipalities didn't use, and they will redistribute it. So there's a, while we're at, I think, 278000 approximately for this allocation, um, it, it has the potential to be even more if there are other municipalities who don't need to use their full allocation. But that wouldn't be apparent until 2026. Or, or later, or yes. Later. Yeah. Okay. Or 2024, because you have to decide what you're doing by then. Okay. Um, so the way it's uh, no, go ahead. the way I look at it briefly is if you know if we want to tap into this money, which I think we do, then we should have an avenue for each like we should have an avenue saying this is going to be for the, for the well up there that the water department wanted, and we have an avenue for maybe prosecution, you know, the fire man, and a few avenues that we're going to use the money for and have real strong strings attached to it, so to speak. So we're going to get make sure we get funded for it. Does that make sense to what I'm saying? Yes. You, and, and I, I not, think like have something that, you know, well, maybe we're not really sure we need this money, but we'll take it anyway, and then I have a good plan for it. That's, that's all I'm getting at. So my suggestion would be, if you want to accept the funds, then the board conduct workshops with and without department heads, with and without the water sewer district commissioners. Once you identify the projects that you want to fund, you have to have a public hearing to engage with the public to hear feedback about your plan. Um, but then before we actually agree to embark on any of those projects, we go through this list and we make sure we've got all of our um, strings accomplished before, and, and decide again, is it is it worth it? Okay, we haven't accepted any funds yet, we thought we were going to, but now push comes to shove, we're ready to do the first project. Do we really want to do this five pages worth of stuff? And maybe in the end, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. 
Um, can I kick the can down the road until one more meeting? Just so we can go through the terms and conditions and make sure. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we well, well, I don't think we're going to accept the funds tonight anyway. I, I, where we plan on uh, I mean, it's up to. to because I, I really want to go through and scrutinize that a little yeah. more. Yeah, you Let's have it in your, you have that five pages in your email. Right. So, so yeah, we, I read, um, but, uh, I did we can certainly. Uh, make nice <laughs> the, one the one that does. The one that does. But I didn't um, remember seeing this part in it. So I read that page, the one. Uh, I'll forward it. That's okay. That's okay. I'll find it in the email. Okay. Okay. So we're going to, uh, we'll vote on that. Um, oh, Either either next week. So so next week is, is is a posted as a regular select board meeting, but I really want to keep it to strategic planning and not get bogged so down in administrative. I propose that we um, go you know kind of make a decision on this in the next regular select board meeting. Okay. I think that's fine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Next regular which one of that or something. Um, okay. Um, the budget committee proposed schedule, um, which I think mm -hmm. people have got. Um, this doesn't need our approval, does it? It does, oh, okay. in that they are essentially directing your department heads to be ready with a budget by a certain date. So okay. they really need your permission to direct your department heads in that way. Um, and then also, um, they're Perhaps we don't need to decide tonight when the public hearing on the town budget might be. Um, the deliberative session, all that is, is blank for now. Um, but yes, I would say just to decide, because the board likewise needs to hear from your own department heads before they go to the budget committee so that you're on board with their budget and what they're presenting. So this is um, kind of dictating your schedule as much as it is the department heads. Mm -hmm. um. I'm just reading through this, and um, seems early for some of it. I know you wanted to be early. They've been trying to move it forward because they find that once they hear from all the department heads and they go into deliberations, they feel very crunched and pressured about time, particularly with SB two. But. Um, it's, yeah. it's gotten kind my, of my problem close. is on September 8th they're looking for CIP that would mean we'd have to have all of our CIP meetings prior to that I mean I, I would I would shuffle this around um, yeah, maybe shift out CIP for another two weeks yeah so we because be meeting in September about it. All, although it those very first week those meetings we have been trying to bunch together over the course of a couple of nights. So keep in mind the board needs to decide how you feel about these things before right. it. So um, CIP needs to meet, but also the board has to decide what you're going to do with the CIP proposal. Right. So, so that leads to um, the board ought to give the department heads a deadline by which they will have their budgets to you all. Sooner rather than later, so they can start preparing for that. Why is there like okay, sorry, uh, like a month and a half gap between? I think they ran into issues in November with Thanksgiving. To my mind, they could certainly um, put more than one meeting in November. Yeah. They, they came with... Maybe between October the 6th and November 17th, there's, there's a review. But, um, yeah, I find it interesting that you're pushing a lot into September. Yeah, it just, um, that just seems, mm -hmm. it seems like that's going to be a little too early for us, right. I, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to get maybe three quarters, you know, when you're thinking about budgeting. To get some, right. yeah. So I don't, I don't know the protocol in communicating with. Um, um, you are the ex officio, oh, okay. so you certainly can communicate on behalf of the board with the budget committee. Okay. Um, or you can ask me to do that. Um, I'll, I'll reach out um, if everyone's okay. Who is in charge of the budget committee? Right John, wasn't it John? John, where did it? Is he stepping down? Is I not? Oh, no. Okay. He's talking about it. Oh yeah. Oh good. Good, good, good. He just re-ran, right? 
he re ran. Uh, he, he, was, he was considering uh, let me not, being by, not being chair. Oh, gotcha. But he has agreed okay. to serve as chair again. Thank you, Chuck. No, um, okay. Okay. Um, if, if it's all right with yes. Yes, Paul and Ken, I'll, I'll reach out and just, uh, just a, a little tweak. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I know we got to get started early because it all happens. And I know you're talking a little tweak like a week here. Yeah. Week, you're not like a no. whole month and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, just a little more breathing on the food would be great. Okay. And we'll probably obviously be doing, when it comes budget time, we'll be doing probably regular, regular meeting, and then the next week will be budget time. Uh, we'll have to, we'll have yeah. to yep. yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, we had a bunch of policies that um, were either brand new or to be, um, to be, amended and I think you all have copies in front of you. Um, it is, you know, just to keep an eye on the clock, um, 8.35, I don't know if we want to address this stuff tonight. I mean, personnel, uh, there are red line, there's a red line version that has the change that we've already um, talked about around um, accrued Oh, I'd like to change the value. Okay, why don't we pause a moment? I'm actually going to take okay. a over. Excuse me. Keep it running a little longer. You still got 75? 60. Oh. Did, I went. Oh, did uh, yeah, uh, I uh, I suppose I could change it to be sure. God only knows if we're oh, going yeah. to be There is a way of having a, a, a current reference copy for the board and employees, and then you can certainly continue to discuss again. Okay. Or we can, if you think you I can address it quickly, quickly, like, you know, I some other point of it, then we can <laughs> keep it in draft form and, okay. and keep working on it. Let's, let's do a different version. So I see surplus, and I have not read this, um, surplus equipment yeah. and then disbursement. I didn't, there have. is no policy around disbursement. Um, Kim had asked that on the agenda. Oh, the yeah. idea of creating a policy around disbursements. Okay. And that, that can come later. Yeah, but you know, the more that's spelled out don't in wait, black don't and white, it right. leads to less confusion. I, I, I think policy might be something that deserves a strategic planning session of its own. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many deficiencies with policies and, and there ought to be a priority list of um, ones that are of greater importance mm -hmm. than others. Um, and also some might be easy to kick off and might be a priority for that. Okay. Um, so it, it sounds like we're in agreement that we're just going to table uh, approving policies um, okay. until we get like a, a more finalized version of, of personnel, and I, I, I haven't had a chance to, to read this. Um, okay. I was actually fine with doing this revision of the personnel okay. policy. Let's, yeah. Um, let's. And then we talked about maybe doing, um, talking about it during strategic planning, like where would you fit that in? Okay. So um, if you guys are okay. I'm good with that. I mean, the, the changes that let's just let's just talk about the changes. Um, so we're moving like one day pay okay, um, in Article Five. I think we're yep. Do that. I think we're good with that. And then uh, the other changes we we have already voted on, but it's adding one more legal holiday, um, and then a, a, around. Okay, so more around the holidays and, and how we're going to handle that, and then uh, changing when accrued time expires from June to December. So 
If someone wants to make a motion to approve those changes as presented, I'll make a motion. That just needs to have a look at it. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve it. All right. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on that? No. Hearing none. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're good there. Got that one. Awesome. And then the the surplus sale, I, I will make a point to read that for our next board meeting later. Hopefully, we go. So, I have one purchase order that was in our board folder, um, and I'll make, uh, I'll move purchase order 1738 to Janitos Landscaping for $2,800 for uh, Summer Spring Mall. I'm sorry. All right, any discussion on 1738? Uh, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Right. Thank you for that. Um, board member updates. Um, I, I did attend a rather brief um, budget committee meeting where we had an organizational meeting um, to elect a chair and a vice chair. Um, John Art Wardway is the chair. Joe Desch is the vice chair. Um, Joe is also our representative on CIP. Um, and that was that was pretty much it from that meeting. Um, I think I haven't done anything else. Um, I uh, the only thing I, I have uh, I have rec. I can't remember. Is this Thursday? Next Thursday? I didn't check my schedule. Uh, I go to this Thursday. Okay. We'll, we'll first time we we'll meet in person. We'll be better, right? And I believe I have a higher safety. Okay. Um, what do you have on this highway safety? Which I thought you said opposite. <laughs> we have one of those now. Um, Paul, could you tell me, like, when you get a chance, confirm the recreation committee meeting day so I can make sure it's posted? Because I don't There's nothing see it. Is there nothing posted? I don't see it. Yeah, okay. I'll have to talk to Mike. Must be, like, maybe it's next week. Next Thursday. I'll send an email. And, and just have because last the last one we forgot to post. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, town administrator updates. Um, the planning board met last week for also a very brief um, time to appoint a delegate to Stratford Regional Planning Subcommittee around our fresh water grant um, that SRPC applied for on our behalf with Milton. Um, so now we have the road agent, the road agent myself, um, and the land use administrator serving with, um, to, to have discussions, probably a half dozen meetings around the goals of this grant, um, which will eventually align our planning regulations and processes with stormwater regulations. So um, that's really great, to try, um, but it's something we're going to have to maintain um, is, is um, communication and collaboration between planning and stormwater because they're very much tied also with nitrogen in terms of non-point source items. So Kevin Haynes graciously agreed to serve on that subcommittee. Um, Last week, the ZBA met to hear a variance application for an accessory dwelling unit um, requesting a variance from the section requiring that it be attached. That's on General Sullivan. That was approved. Um, they have another case next week hearing from a property owner on Cottage Lane who wants to use his helicopter, which is not allowed in that zone. Um, so if you're interested, by all means, um, feel free to attend that. Interesting. Okay. 
the Conservation Commission is meeting at 9 a.m. this Saturday, starting in Scotland, and there's a schedule on the public calendar. They're going to be meeting at different times throughout the day in different locations, the Community Garden and also the Franklin Macalini Preserve um, to give tours to people. Uh, I, I wanted to let the board know that there has been um, a number of inquiries lately as far as welfare has go, gone and, and some applications, but there has, haven't been any disbursements in some time. So things have been quiet, that's why you haven't heard from me about anything like that. So um, welfare is, is quiet for now. Um, and, and that's all I have. Yeah. Okay. Um, under any other business to come before the board, I, I have uh, a few things. Um, to, uh, okay, Stratford Regional Planning. We have two delegates to grow collaboratively and cooperatively and with intention rather than just sort of passively. So those two vacancies are um, not required to otherwise be affiliated with the town residents. Um, but there's always the goal that those people would report to the select board um, periodically around topics of interest that are happening on that board. Okay. Um, I mean, I think we should take full advantage if there's a resident that is available. So if, if we're in agreement, we can put that out on the website. Just ask them to volunteer there. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, I, I just wanted to talk briefly about next week's strategic planning and, and I know Caroline you had uh, made a suggestion on how to organize it and um, I don't really remember what that suggestion was um, but I don't know if we want to decide that now or wait until next week. Um, I, I think maybe a shared document or we can kind of start to... I'm sorry I meant to share the document I have started and it's a like Okay. Or maybe Caroline can create a shared document. Yeah, if you want to copy, copy my copy I sh shared it with you. I don't know. I, I don't I'll know. Share. I, I, I had trouble in some way. So I don't. Okay. I think I lost access, or else you put a few things in an email to me, and I didn't get. I, I don't remember, but but okay. it would be better if you could share it. Okay, I will do that. I just need to remember to do that. Um, I will make a note to remind you. Okay. okay. Um, and lastly, the, the asset subcommittee that, um, that Lorraine um, suggested, I, I don't know how else to attack this problem because I, I, in my mind, the, the initial exercise of cataloging everything we have is not that hard. You know, it's going to be time consuming, but keeping it up to date and knowing where it is and, um, I don't know how we do that. And, oh, we already have an action item on this that you're going to... I was going to okay. try to... Sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay, though, but you do make a good point. To catalog it, you want to after that. Keep but, it up to but, date. But, and can you talk about the time? Yeah. Yeah. To me, in some ways, it, well, and this is what we should talk about the strategy, probably is that it's First of all, I know back in the 14th of June it was brought up by a resident, but I'm bringing it up too because for 15 months we met virtually. So I'm just trying to understand what the difficulty is of having either a laptop or something that the community can call it. I'm not saying we have to even a video, but then they can participate in community input and why it can't happen as soon as the next meeting. I think that should be prioritized on our list. Our strategy list, you know, and I agree it should be high priority. Okay. Um, like things we want to tackle and a timeline around tackling. Mm -hmm. Right, and then um, so I just I yeah. um, uh, Pat who's, who's from the water uh, district, he he said that they just set up a laptop yeah. like on the end of the desk um, and create a Zoom meeting and let people observe, which I, I think is fine. I, th I feel like the rub is, are we supposed to go check the, during the meeting, check the laptop and 
how do we know who's on the other side of that laptop asking questions? Questions are really supposed to be from residents, and I don't think there's any way to verify that. I just think we need to think it through. Okay. Um, but and if also, they didn't zoom though, all that time, they have to identify themselves they have to identify and themselves. where yeah. they live. I think we would have to have a room to speaker so everybody can hear as well. Right. It has to, it has to be, obviously, that whoever's calling in or whatever, they understand that the meeting's running. Right. So and you're not going to be the input, but you right. can't just have, you know, we're talking about something they just got throwing. It ran pretty good when we had the Yeah. Virtuals. Yes. Um, I'm not trying to shut off engagement with the public at all, um, but I, I just think we need to, to think it through and make sure that it's managed properly. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's, yeah, let's talk about that. And then, um, so the other thing, it's kind of a funny question, but the, the, the warrant, the resolution for redistricting. We, redistricting. Yes. Do we have the required 25 or 30 signatures that was required originally? Yes. Well, and do we have yes. those on record? So if I wanted to call them to make sure we have 25 or 30 that we have to Absolutely. And you can see the town clerk about that. Before any okay. petition article is placed on Just the warrant, sure. okay. we always have the town clerk. Um, it's the clerk's job to look through the list and make sure that there are 25 without any duplicates and that everybody's a registered okay. voter and everything. Is that, have we signed for that yet? Have we signed that together as well? Okay. Yes. Double yeah. check on that side. Yeah. Um, and then this is just the last thing I'm bringing up. So, when you're seeing a schedule of like 8.30 to 4.30, I'm just used to 40 hour work week. And this is how I've known it everywhere is. You know, if you're working 40 hours and your hours are normally 8 to 4.30 with a half hour lunch, is that, am I miss, missing that somewhere? For um, 40 hour work for employees? I, if I may? Yes, please. The, my hours were never set by the board, and the board certainly could set my hours. Okay. According to the Department of Labor, people are not required to take a lunch break. They can work and sit and eat at their desk. That's at the discretion of the employer. You can certainly discuss that if you want to. It's typically okay. like... I, I was pretty sure, um, I guess I should look at it, that labor laws require that after so many yeah, hours. That was six that, hours. Yeah. They require a 15-minute break after six hours, a, a paid 15-minute <laughs> break, and then the employer is required to offer at least a half-hour unpaid lunch. But at the discretion of the supervisor, that can be waived. I can certainly be here generally from eight to four thirty if you prefer, or or some. So or I just I just want to back up. <clears throat> so so just to give everyone context, this this request came from a series of emails um, that I, I think we need to be careful about g gathering information is fantastic, highly encourage it. I think representing that as a request of the board, I think we need to not do that. Um, but also, I don't, I don't know what the problem is. Like, what, what's the? Because it, in Caroline's instance, and we can go well, into the problem. The problem is, is we have eighty-two hours that I got in town hall for hours. Eighty-two hours. We got forty hours. Thirty-two hours and ten hours. Okay. So I'm just curious where the all these. Thirty-one and okay. twenty. Forty. Thirty-one. Oh, no, no, Weekly. No, no. Weekly. So, so you don't work. Oh, you don't? No. Oh, so you just... Uh, when whatever. I said 20, I was talking about the town clerk. I'm sorry, I wasn't sure who you were referring to. So does not work with regular schedule. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. How much? That's, that's all I'm getting at first. Well, and this is one of the things that I wanted to bring up in strategy, is getting a better handle on um, consistent hours. Um, not, well, I mean, not just you, but... Our, our town clerk, our tax collector. Town clerk is well, deputies, their own we same. Need to, we need town to clerk, and town clerk, tax collector, fall on the front, same hour set. Okay. One of the things I wanted to bring up was in the most communities that I've talked to, there are deputies for each other. 
and that's the way it was at another point in time. And we, I feel like we need to get back to that. Okay, so, 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 so um, just having a, a better handle on everybody's hours and when town hall is open and right. availability. So I feel like just the whole thing needs discussion. It can absolutely be discussed. Yep. Um, it, and when you say all town employees, I, I completely agree that we ought to know what's the need at, at the transfer station and the town garage and the fire. You can't, you no, can't schedule. Um, so yeah, I, I completely agree that it, that should be. It might be just me because I know there's a lot of fluctuation in hours in the last year because of COVID. So having, uh, I'm just thinking well, consistency. Okay, yeah. Yeah. During COVID. Mm -hmm. I would look at it totally different, and you know, obviously people work from home and then you know, probably so look back at it. This is a really timely discussion because um, as you're heading to budget season, the other thing that you need to think about is crafting a compensation policy for the tax collector because we've learned that as as Paul said, as a as an appointed official, she's not subject to um, the personnel policy, and she's not really an employee, and yet we've been treating her as such. And so we've been um, advised that you could do this with the town clerk too, which could create working hours to a, an hourly wage. It can, it can codify all the, and it should codify all the expectations that you're talking about. So. Um, we should put that on the mm -hmm. warrant for March, but um, the board ought to think about starting to talk to them about what that might look like. Well, my, in some of my discussions when I, I talked to some of the other towns about Juneteenth and how they handled it, I also asked about the deputy arrangements that they have. Um, and I feel like we need to kind of um, get back to where we were, where they were deputies for each other. Um, and also, I'm a little concerned about the limitations of the town clerk at this point. Um, because I came in to have a document notarized and that he wasn't available for that. Fortunately, Chuck was. Um, he, he, there are certain things that he cannot do that Kate was able to do. So I want to talk about how to get back. He's a, he's he has filed for that. Oh, okay. great. So he, he will be a justice and I'm going to soon. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. Okay, great. I just feel like there are some limitations so, around all of that. So we can't we can't dictate to town clerk his hours, but we can have help if he's not there with you know the staff is available that they can do certain things. Yeah. So, and I think that's uh, all I'm looking for is clarity around no, I agree. who's responsible for right. what and Right, and if someone says hey we're time home town not home town hall hours open stuff like that. Yeah. So that was gonna be on my my list of okay. Um, for strategy as well. Yep, let's, yeah, let's talk about it. And that starts next Monday. Uh, starts next Monday and ends next Friday. We're going to Okay, what do you Yep, that's fine. All right, good. Um, okay. You guys want to start at 6, uh, 6 is too early. That's okay, 6 30. Yeah, 6 30 is fine with me. 6 is fine with me, but if it's too too quick, that's fine. Um, I can, I can try. No, okay. worry about it. No, well, what's it posted? Do we have it right? Well, it's posted at 6.30. Okay. Okay. Well, it's it's so I just, you know, um, take that. I, should, you know, I do think we should try to limit it to a couple of hours. Yes. After that. I think it has to be a very strategic planning be, session. I'm going to be okay. right here. Let's, okay. Awesome. Uh, anything else? Uh, any other business to come before the board? If not, I'll go to community input. Well, I do. You oh, yes, thank and you. I, I really that, want to yeah. get oh, yeah, Jesus. Of so I uh, because I juggled the agenda so much I skipped right over that. So Sorry. um if by consensus um, we want to approve the minutes of the fourteenth and twenty eighth. Fourteenth? I'm good with the twenty eighth, I was misquoted. Um I thank Lorraine in the minutes for uh, the knowledge and the dedication of the tax collector, but you had not yet quoted as I thank Lorraine. Uh, which dedication. her dedication is no, great too, no, no. <laughs> but that's I was fine. I was bringing up the town employee, okay. but I could understand yeah. where you came from. That's it. Okay. Um, and I'm okay with twenty. Okay. That's a piece of cake. Okay. So we're good with the fourteenth and twenty eighth. Second. 
we're into the We can just do it by computer. Yeah. Um, so, for, is there an opening? Um, oh, I do have something. Well, I'm wondering if we're going to address the rest of the consent calendar. Oh. Mm -hmm. Which you can do it as a group. That's why it's the consent calendar. We're just take the whole thing if there's no discussion on any of it. Yep. Yes. We can. We can. Exactly. So we're good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Community so, input. Okay. I, it's about the drop box. I wish you would get a policy about that or procedures so that people know the community property. Well, we paid our taxes on the 22nd into the drop box. And it wasn't until the 1st of July that we had the money taken out and was notified only because Ken asked. You know, because we thought the thing was lost, obviously, to have it go so long. So I'm thinking, how do people know, you know, that something has come in if it's going to just sit here for a while? Do you, I don't know. Do you know the... the... There isn't a policy about it. It depends on the day of the week, whether it's an afternoon day or a, or a morning day. Um, typically, the person who comes in early in the morning will check it in the morning, and the person who comes in in the afternoon will check it in the afternoon. Um, when we're open, it's not really an issue. So it varies who checks it, but it's typically um, either the bookkeeper or the town clerk. Which is usually the other. Unless it's tax season, in which I'm, I'm sure the tax collector has her own schedule of when she checks yeah, it. Yeah, so, so it's daily. Usually. Oh, it would absolutely So something got left daily. forever, or is there something someone dropped it and then just got stuck? June 22nd, it was dropped off. Yep. And it wasn't processed until July 1st. But, were there, but there weren't any um, penalties. No, there weren't any penalties, but there was a lot of anxiety about it. You know, and I'm sure it, it will lead to loss of confidence in using the drug box. I know we can do it. I think there should be an expectation that it's checked every day. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. By some employee, because there's at least one employee here. Every day it is, is checked every day. Well, I'm wondering if it should be stamped like the envelopes with the date received. It's a good idea. It's I'm not that sure that that would have helped you know. Well, it, I would if I knew. Well, I don't know. I don't know. South Berwick has a way of tracking uh, that. I think some, they have a way of tracking that. I haven't tried to ask about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it might be an electronic tracking system. <laughs> it's always good to try to find ways to help I didn't know if, you know, like you wanted to have an email receipt or something. If you give your email and ask them to, to just get a receipt. That it, whatever came in. I mean, like, what if it's dog tags, and or if it's time sensitive? It's something under. Um, but it's something I thought you should be thinking. You can about. always improve service, but to me, it sounds overall the checking every day that it's fairly well covered. But yeah, you can always improve service. That's mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And is it secure? I think it is mm -hmm. secure, right? And it's locked. I mean, could Why is, someone... Is it open? Isn't it a... It, it, a when they were close to the public, it was open on the inside for the convenience of the employees, since yeah. there weren't people coming and going. Oh. Now that the doors are opened, it's locked on the inside. So okay. it's, it's secure. That's, well, that's, that's the right answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyone else with community input? If not... Entertain a motion to adjourn. Thanks, Mr. Sanders. I have one last question. Can we try to have a, a list, like some 
things in the bucket for our meet next meeting yeah. that we can all think about in advance? Maybe? Sure. Okay. Yep. Great. Sure. I think as soon as Miles shares his yeah, document, then you can just start putting your ideas put stuff okay. on, on there. And then we'll yeah. That should hopefully expedite things. A bit. Yeah. No. Okay. Great. Yeah, I don't. I don't think next week needs to be a brainstorming session as much as here's right. here's a list of stuff. Let's right. start prioritizing. Right. Um, ranking. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. I have a motion on the table. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. We made.